The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson was first published in 1926 and has since become a foundational text for personal finance and wealth management. It is considered to be one of the best book ever written that helped thousands of people achieve financial independence and freedom. In this video, I'll share five key lessons from the book that can help both you and me achieve the million dollar milestone. First lesson sounds like this. Save and invest wisely. Have you ever wondered why some people are better at acquiring wealth than others? Is it because they are thrifty and stuff every penny they save into their mattress, while others squander what they earn on all kinds of trinkets? In fact, the secret of becoming wealthy lies somewhere in between these two extremes. To become wealthy, you must not just hoard money, but also know how to use it wisely. The first thing you must do is save up money. This means you can't spend everything you earn and must therefore live slightly below your means. Cut back on those little luxuries in life, like the city weekend in Paris you had planned or the quilted luxury toilet paper you buy. The regular stuff will get the job done just as well. Saving up money in your mattress won't increase in value. Even putting it into a bank will only generate a measly interest. Instead, you have to invest your savings in something that will generate more wealth, like stocks, government bonds, or funding startups. If you do this right, your savings will increase in value with no extra effort on your part. Whenever you do make an investment, though, be sure to do so wisely. Only entrust your savings to people who know how to use them. For example, you shouldn't give a lumberjack your money because he says he's going to set up a business buying and selling diamonds. On the other hand, giving your money to a hedge fund to invest wisely can make sense. They probably know the market better than you. Second, increase your ability to earn. Gaining wealth is a long process made up of countless tiny steps forward and often more than a few setbacks. But why does acquiring wealth take such a long time? Quite simple, because the world is constantly changing, especially financially. This means that you can never just pick one wealth building strategy, like investing in a certain stock, and sit back to watch the money come in. The financial system and life itself is very uncertain. So sooner or later, something massive can happen, like the stock market collapsing. This means you have to adapt to the new situation and learn about new wealth building strategies, experimenting with them and probably failing in a few. And just as you find your next winning strategy, something huge will happen again. But through this process of experience and adaptation, you will increase your overall ability to invest wisely as you accumulate more knowledge. This process of trial and error is analogous to the way scientific progress is made. Failed experiments can be just as useful as successful ones. So if you make a failed investment in subprime mortgages, for example, you might learn so much that you can then make successful investments in that same field. Third, make your money work for you. What is the difference between making money and attaining wealth? If you're like most people, you probably didn't even realize there was one. But there is an important difference. Making money describes a process where you work for money, but attaining wealth means being in circumstances where money works for you. To better understand this, imagine that you work as the manager in a successful company and every month you take home a very good wage. Clearly you're making money, but are you attaining wealth? Not necessarily. To attain wealth, you need to go through the process of saving up and investing some of that money. For example, if you were to save part of your income and invest it in real estate, you would be attaining wealth because your money would be working for you and not the other way around. Making money is usually done to achieve short-term financial success. You usually only care about the things you can buy with that next paycheck, while the future is of little concern. But there is an inherent danger in this kind of thinking. What if the next paycheck never arrives? Attaining wealth, on the other hand, involves longer-term goals. For example, the real estate that you bought won't bring you immediate wealth. Rather, you have to first pay off the investment 
or wait for its value to increase. This can take a while, but once the investment starts paying off, it will most likely keep doing so for as long as you own it. Fourth, build a stream of income. When you loan someone money, you can expect them to pay interest for it. And this is one of the key ways in which those with money can attain more wealth. Imagine you want to start factory. What do you need? You need raw materials to create your products and the manpower to make them. For all these resources, you will have to pay. But you also need capital, money to build the factory. In this sense, capital is a resource just like any other employee, and as such must be paid for. To attract employees, you need to offer a salary. And in the same way, to attract capital, you need to offer the investors something, interest. As an investor, interest is an attractive way of building wealth because of its compound nature. You can get your interest earnings to increase over time because you will also be earning interest on top of interest. For example, imagine you invest $100,000 in a new business and on the due date, the owner duly pays you back the original sum plus 10% interest, amounting to $110,000. You then decide to reinvest the whole amount into another business with the same terms. This time, when you get back the sum plus 10% interest, you'll receive $121,000. Your interest earnings have increased. You can continue this process indefinitely, always earning more and more interest. Fifth, leave below your means. Irrational financial decisions equal financial ruin. Far too many people fall into this trap, but here's the thing how you can avoid this. First of all, you need to make all decisions about expenses and costs using a realistic assessment of your personal needs and your financial circumstances. For example, say you desperately want a new flashy car. You don't really need it, and buying it would require taking out a big loan on very unfavorable terms. Clearly you should not get it, but let's say you do anyway. Now you're using most of your income to pay off the interest, and eventually you hit the point when you should pay back the actual debt. You can't afford it, so you take another loan just to pay off this one. Just like that, you've ended up in a debt spiral and had better hope that the flash car is also comfortable to sleep in. Taking on debt in general is a bad idea because you won't be able to save up money to invest and accumulate wealth. Instead, you'll be spending your income on paying back the debt. Those were all five key lessons that I've learned from this book. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it watching, please leave your like and subscribe to my channel.